Hello, my butterflies. Welcome back to Queen Chi Chi Loves. If this is your first time here, please make sure you subscribe and click that lovely bell. If you are returning, welcome back. Don't forget to comment and share this video. Y'all know I got right into it with my brows. Here's the thing, okay? Can I talk to y'all real quick? I just did this whole video in a voiceover and did I look down and I didn't actually hit the record button? Only me, right? That must mean God wanted me to do it over. So let's talk about what our topic is for today. So our topic for today is going to be about how I feel like we have not necessarily prepared you guys for the real world. And do I think that the vast majority of you all are not ready for the real world, at least the ones around me? The answer is you are not ready. Did I sound like Murray when I said that? Because that was, no? Okay, my bad. Well, I don't exactly feel like you guys are ready. And here's the reason why. I was talking to a friend the other day and he was talking about how his son has a car and the car that he has for his son, you know, he felt like some things were a little bit out of order and and he needed to pull back on the freedom that his son had and and get things back in what I would call order, right? So I feel like a lot of us 80s babies and I would say late 70s babies our primary goal was to work really hard get these degrees get this money um level up make sure that we provided all of our offspring and y'all know i feel like uh kiara and skylar is mine um just saying they're from my flesh and my blood they're mine um but they were my primary focus and with them i always thought I never want them to have to experience some of the things that I experienced. And my mom always taught me and the people in my family always taught me each generation should get better. Right now, if y'all know me, y'all know I was going to try to overdo it. Hence me probably uh, being an overthinker and having insomnia. I have my best thoughts in the middle of the night, though, but I digress. So each generation should get better. Right. So I felt like. A lot of a couple of the things I'm gonna stop saying a lot. My, I'm, I apologize. A couple of the things that were a primary focus for me to make sure that my niece and nephew never experienced, and if I could be of any help to my um, other sisters in love, that I would offer the same to them and be present and show up and really have that village, right? So I grew up with the village, not just in my family, but also in the apartment complex that I grew up in. And then maybe it changed after elementary. I think elementary is when all of us like stayed in the same apartments. But after that, we moved different places, right? So that community and that village was a part of my forming years, though. And we still stayed in touch. And so the people that we were around and we grew with, I mean, the parents still have that village type of feel in that they took care of us. And so that's one of the things that I wanted to mirror with my niece and nephew and keep between me and my sisters and things like that, keep all of the kids close and at least do as much with them as we could so that they could stay close, right? Each generation gets better. But with them staying close, like we were all close when we grew up because we like played outside together and do different things like that. I wanted to level it up and so did the people around me in that we not only got them together, but it was an experience. So yes, the park is wonderful. Um, things like that is wonderful. But also being able to have them say like when they came back from um, summer you know you get asked in school well what did you do over the summer and then there's always that handful of kids that's like oh i went to disneyland i went to knoxbury form i did this i did that and then there was the rest of us oh i played in the pool but we thought it was the best but you know you get that person or that group around you um that are kids kids can be so cruel and it's like that's all you did and it's like that I had fun. That was the best thing ever. All my friends was there, but it dilutes what you think is great, right? So now 
in your adult brain, you're like, I'm going to make sure my baby's got that. So that is what we did. Um, they had experience together. We didn't call flights. We didn't did a bunch of different things because that is something that we wanted to offer to our offspring, right? Okay, that's one. Two is I didn't ever want my niece and nephew to see a bill that was pink. If you know, you know. I don't want no pink. I don't want no note on the door. I don't want no none of that. Like, no, not at all. That was one of the other things. So when we do our budget, especially me, I can speak for me. Um, my bills off top are taken out. That's just the way that I function. It's the way that I always have. And all of it will be paid. I don't care how much it is. Hence the summer being, you know, a time that I'm like, is this really happening to me? Y'all will get it when you get it to an adult and that bill comes in your name. Hopefully your parents don't got a light bill in your name right now. But I digress. Parents, get that bill out of them kids' name. Okay. Back to what I was saying. So, that was one. Uh, That was another one. And then the other was, I wanted them to have like, when school got ready to start, they got whatever that they needed from school supplies you know, from a, the smallest eraser all the way to the socks that they wore. I want them to have the type of backpack they wanted. If you know, you know, this stuff is important. I wanted them to have the backpack they wanted, the pencil case for Kiara, you know, the girls, you know, you already know. The matching backpack with the lunch pail, um, things like that, right? Those things was important. As well, I wanted them to have really good grades and that is how that was their currency. Okay, that's it. Your currency is to get good grades and I will take care of the rest um, that I can take care of. That was my promise to them. Okay, here's where I feel like we did the disservice because those are my top three, like very much so top three. Uh, we not wait until it. I don't want to have to say when I get paid, I want to be able to do it when when it need to be done and when you ask to be done. And so, yeah, make this happen. Budget ahead of time. OK, now here's where I feel like we messed up. We said all you have to do is go to school and get good grades and I'll take care of the rest. OK, we have made you guys believe that simply because you get good grades, you can ask for a pair of Yeezys. You can ask for a pair of Jordans. You can ask for a Gucci belt. You can ask for all of these type of things simply because you have good grades. That is a false reality. That is a false reality if I have ever heard one because it, it doesn't align with the real world. And so we have not exactly done our best a lot of us done our best with preparing you for what the real world is like and that is why we are doing things like trying to have so much order at you know junior and senior year because it's at that point you realize oh wait i missed a big part because now you're giving whatever you know kid that you, you take care of and love uh your kid your niece nephew whatever uh as a guardian you are now having to loosen the reins and let them go out there. And we're seeing how you guys are acting when you go out there. You, It's a piece missing where the sense of urgency isn't there. Uh, the reality that you are not owed these things and the reality that it should be within you. Uh, I, I thought that it was within every kid because that's how we grew up. But it's different. I thought wrong. I thought that if you want something that's actually, you know, on the expensive side, you would come to us as kids and say, um, I typically get this, but I really want this. And so is there something that I can do to earn the money? Insert laugh right there. Y'all ain't asking us that. You want to know why you're not asking us that? Because we didn't spoil y'all asses. That's why. That's We have really... Now, I will pat us on the back in that we we did our thing and I'm proud of everybody around me. And listen, that is a blessing in itself. There is not off the top of my head because y'all know I don't lie off the top of my head. There is not one person 
that is around me um, that I'm not proud of. Everybody is doing their thing, providing for their kids, doing their best, um, and it's rooted in love. And I think that it's the most amazing thing ever, and we can still all call on each other. So that village is there, and our babies do see that. So they know if, you know, for example, uh, one of my people is a social worker. And when I was looking at different things, uh, I could call on this person to help somebody that I needed in that area. We are very much so a village. And if we can do anything to help each other's kids, we're going to do it. But that's not exactly reality. And the reason why is, yes, we worked really hard to get in uh stable positions uh, where we can do things like that. But um, the reality, that's not it. It, it. You have to sometimes wait on things. And we waited on things for ourselves so they didn't have to wait. So they didn't see the wait. Um, if there was a a bill that came up that we didn't expect, we just made it happen and made it not affect them and never complained about it. Even if it meant we had to get a second job. And I know some people right now that make six figures and they're still driving for Uber and things like that, just to have extra money for those expensive things that their kids may work. A lot of people do it when it comes to the senior year. When your kid hits senior year, baby, you like, "Mm -mm, I can't do nothing this year. I got to buckle down. I got to do this. I got to do that. But that's not reality. So I feel like with the group that's coming up now, like with Keith, with my uh, niece, I did that with my nephew, with my nephew, but with my niece, um, I pay her for the extra things that she does. So that's how she makes her money to buy like her extra stuff. Now, Clothes and shoes like that? No, ma'am. I'm still not doing that. No, ma'am. I'm not. But if there is something extra that she wants after I'm done buying what I buy, then yes, she will, you know, work for it. I, I try to teach her and my nephew too. Um, I'm not just going in on one, but I'm saying I have time with her, right? Correct the problem when you notice it, okay? Um, they are able to get things for their birthday and for Christmas. And they're at the age where they're like, okay, I want money. I tell them what they can do with that money. Okay. Before it would be like, I really don't care what you do with the money. Go lose your mind. Have your, live your best life. Have fun. Right now that they are a little bit older, it's time to pull in the reins and, and help them to understand the finances of what they have. Um, the responsibility that they have to fulfill some of their own wants when they get money. So you don't get money for, let's say, your birthday and then spend that money and then turn around and tell me something else that you want. Within that want, it should be a part of your money or it should be a part of you coming to me with a plan and asking me what you can do to earn that money. Um, that's just the way that it should happen. And those are the things that we should have done that I feel like we did not. Because here's the thing, like I've explained to um, you guys before, I was like really under the impression that my life was going to be like different world. And I was going to go to college, get out of college land a great job work my way up really quickly because um do you see my gpa in college i'm just saying and i was working i'm a star so i know y'all gonna be ready for me when i get there uh insert spongebob 13 years later it finally happened okay now i will say there's a caveat to that let me throw it in real quick a little bit off topic but because i said that i want to acknowledge it i could have made it happen faster i wanted it to happen within my parameters right so when you want certain things to happen you can go and get it you can but what's more important to you and i had to decide that was money more important to me and my title like moving up or was me being in california still around my family more important because yes, I could have gone somewhere else 
even in the same company, I could have went to another state and made a whole lot more. That wasn't important to me. So those type of things are the things that I feel like we should be sharing with you guys once you get to um, an age where you can understand a little bit more because those are real life things like you guys don't see the type of decisions that we make and you shouldn't not the ones that will hurt you right so you don't need to know if that our <laughs> light bill in the summer is like five or six hundred dollars like you guys don't need to know that it's not your business because we're going to pay it and it's good trust me it's good what you do need to know though is when those opportunities become available like um being promoted right so let's say that mom and dad or mom or dad is offered another role in another state right they can go work in that state and they will make double the money that they're making at home right they can rent their house out and make a little bit of money that that move will be golden if they did that oh my gosh in five years they could literally just coast okay and just enjoy being in their career not stop working okay but they could really just enjoy being in their career here's what they're thinking my baby just started high school i don't want my baby to have to be uprooted like that i want them to be able to enjoy they they high school years with their friends if i move them oh that's just too much for them i can't do it and oh my gosh let's just say the husband got the job and the husband is thinking and that means that my wife will need to find another job yes i make you know i'll be making enough where it can you know she could take her time to find another job you know actually enjoy some time off and blah 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 all of that is what an adult is really thinking and what is really happening so where y'all walking around like oh it's okay i everything is all right no big deal i get dropped off at school i get picked up when it's time for me to want something i can get it the new iphone just came out i'm gonna get that oh i already know i'm getting that for christmas so i don't even need to put it on my list my mama know i want that phone uh, you know what i'm probably gonna get it a little bit early because it dropped before christmas my mama not gonna make me wait all that time because she can't even hold it anyway she can't even hold it right i know what y'all thinking i do because my nieces and nephews be telling me they keep me up on game so that is not real okay it's not real because in your life when you get ready to take over your life you need to be more prepared with the strategic thinking that we have the um how we make decisions uh in that particular situation that i just gave yes it would have been perfect for that family to move it's more money on the table you could live a better life but guess what the quality of your life right the quality of your life how much it would impact his kids him thinking yes this money would cover my wife too and she could take some time to look for another job but my wife loves working she don't want to be at home and she loves her career she's been wanting to be with this company forever and now she got it you know what i'm gonna have to pass on that because it's not just about me it's about my family that decision is not cut and dry it's not you don't just follow money all the time you don't a lot of people pass on a lot of things i did for 13 years i'll move up in the company but leave california uh-uh and i mean california like where i stay i'm not no don't even ask me i'm not going because my family is here even when i got married when the heck did i get laid off three years ago now it's about three years now um when that happened i was offered to either go to florida or be laid off it wasn't even a second thought in my head run me those papers i'm gonna sign these papers because i married somebody who has children and he can't be away from his boys like that and i get it he that wasn't even a, a, a question to even come home and discuss with my husband at that time because i already knew so these are the type of things that I feel like we should be including you guys, excuse me, I need to take a little sip. 
of root beer. Uh, I feel like these are the type of things that we need to share with you guys because we have worked really hard again to get you guys in these particular excuse me positions of comfort but in those positions of comfort we now get to teach you something different so no we don't have to put on you to be a babysitter for your your brother or sister you know um some of some people have a cleaning person like those type of things you don't have to worry about so with us being able to take the worry off your plate we can put knowledge experiences um and those type of things on your plate and that's what we should be sharing with you guys so that when it's time to make these type of decisions you're prepared when it's time for you to be in a relationship and think about somebody other than yourself you do it when it's time to let's say graduate from college and you might have what if you have a, a college sweetheart and both of y'all you know one came from east coast one come from west coast y'all at a southern college right HBCU preferably you're there and you done fell in love oh my god I'm just going I just can't live without her she is the one and then you go and apply for a job in Alaska and she looking at you like I'm not moving to Alaska did you even think I would have preferred to stay here where it's you know mutual that we both uh sacrificed than to move to Alaska, that ain't nowhere near. No. And he's thinking, but I wanted something completely different. Those are the type of things that you need to be prepared to discuss and not run away from it like it's conflict or not run away from it because I don't do drama. Drama is a conversation. Like it's a part of life. The, those things are things that you're going to be discussing that's just reality but a, a a couple of adults that are around me they cannot even think about those type of things and when they do it's so self-centered right uh one of the things the other thing this is the other one roll with me on this uh parents chime in if you've made it to this point but one of the things I was like, okay, when when I was growing up, I did have to take care of my little sister. When I got, uh, my mom was working, I had to take care of my little sister, right? Um, but not baby size, but anyway, I had to take care of her. So that responsibility to care for somebody else, to make sure that, you know, I didn't do certain things around her uh, because I'm older, you know, like, even like kiss a boy. Don't do that in front of your 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 adolescent sister and brother. Okay? Don't do it. Um, but in taking care of her and being responsible for a part of the family household, that taught us responsibility. I feel like that's another one of the big things that we all almost all of us promised each other. Uh, or promised ourselves, I'm not finna make my kid take care of their sibling because that ain't they sibling. They didn't have the baby. I have the baby. So I have to make sure that the baby has what it needs and everything like that its whole entire life. I'm never going to make my oldest responsible for my youngest. Mm -mm, I ain't doing it because I hated it. And uh, she didn't have that baby. He didn't have that baby. That's my baby. Okay. Child, listen. When I look at some of these siblings, I'm like, y'all don't even communicate. Like, we literally let y'all lead separate lives and be your own individual, but y'all don't know how to be responsible for each other. And simply, if we at the beach, you don't know not to come up from the water if everybody don't come up from, from the water. If you go somewhere, everybody go to the park. If you come from the park, Everybody come from the park. Ain't nobody going to the bathroom by themselves. Y'all just don't think outside of yourselves. And I don't know if we can necessarily call that selfish. Because if you've not been put in a position to understand that and experience thinking about somebody else, you would think that the world revolved around you. Even if 
your parents had two, three kids and all of y'all played a different sport and did all of these different things and everybody's needs was met and nobody had to compromise or anything, you wouldn't have that type of experience. And that's really a disservice because it is essential in how you behave when you grow up. Even a person that's the only child. Uh, my best friend is the only child, but he has cousins. And in that respect, you know, they was taught one don't leave without the other. You know, they grew up on the same street, that type of thing. And I feel like we lost a lot of things that we didn't understand why we were doing them when we were younger. And let's just be clear, our parents didn't either. They was just using us as babysitters and didn't even pay us a dime. But I digress. Mm, mm, mm. Wonder if I can call my mama and tell her she owe me some money. Because now that I think about it, you know, when I be paying my niece and my nephew to do stuff, she be like, it's telling me to pay them and stuff. And I'm like, uh, ma'am, who are you? Because you are not the same person. Mom, is that you in there? And she swears her. And I be looking at her and it look like her. But them words coming out of her mouth, I be like, dude. Anywho. Yeah, I feel like there are a lot of things that happened when we grew up that happened for a reason. And we are now missing those things within our kids. And so we need to figure out, and very quickly, from about... Let's say when you enter high school through college, we need to determine like how to implement the values that were missed and how to teach upon those things. And uh, if you are working from home, one of the things that you can do is is be showing your, your kids what you do if their future goals align with what you do. Uh, you should be having them sit with you. You can also have them uh, for the communication piece and knowing how to respect and listen and compromise and deal with conflict and things like that. Have them sit in some of your meetings with you that you're doing virtually. You know, if your camera not on, have them sit in the meetings with you so they can hear the things that happen. Uh, present something in front of them when it's in a draft state so that they can see that not everything you present is just going to be golden. So yeah, you guys see us working uh, day and night and we turn in something. But when we turn that in and give our best, that sucker might get ripped apart because everybody has their input and you humbly take it. It's no big deal, you know, uh, because that no word, they haven't heard that a lot either. And they're praised and given awards. You guys are praised and given awards, excuse me, for participating and just showing up it ain't the real world bro sis that's not the real world if you don't perform you're not getting a raise if you don't perform you're not getting a bonus if you don't excel you might not get that job because it's only one and it's a whole lot of people sometimes fighting for that job my job that i have now uh I believe I, t I was told it was 100 people interviewed or that applied, one of those, but I was the one that got it. And sharing that with me, I believe that my boss shared it because he wanted me to start doing more. And what I mean by more is that, like, talk more. Because um, that was one of my areas that he really wanted me to just stand out and talk more. And when that was presented to me, I took it very well. I took it very well because we grew up hearing things that we may not have liked to hear. Um, and so we are, in our age group, able to filter what is real and what is not, what we should internalize and what we should let go. We're able to do that a lot more. These days, mm, we did you a disservice, okay? Because you can't just say whatever you want to say. All of that, you know, power to the people. I'm going to get to do what I want to do. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I can tell you that, that that's not always a good idea because you have to decide what's more important. 
Is it more important that you say what you got to say? Or is it more important that you get the end result that you want? Okay? And it's not about being uh, being uh, like a punk or being uh, a coward or being uh, belittled. It's not about that. It's about you being able to determine what's more important and again, what the end goal is. You know, of course, you don't let somebody just disrespect the heck out of you. But if it's something like a suggestion or they don't like something that you did in a work or collaborative environment, um, it's sometimes, you know, you do discuss, you know, you have a conversation, healthy conversation about coming to a compromise or an end result. But in that process, there's a way to do it. And... I don't exactly think that a lot of people at this point even know how to communicate. They're so accustomed to going for the jugular, for talking about somebody, for calling them names, even adults. It's ridiculous. Um, And so that's why I'm saying like if you're having a um, like a virtual conference or something like that, a call with the team or Anything where your kid can listen in and see how passionate people become on the phone uh, because passion and anger is often confused, especially with this very hypersensitive culture that we're in. Very hypersensitive, but also very straightforward and disrespectful in the way that you speak. Um, and, And that's not going to translate into corporate America. It's not going to translate if you want to be an entrepreneur because you can't say whatever you want to say. You can't treat people however you want to treat people. You can't think the world is about you, even if it's their own business, okay? This is one of the lessons that, you know, I've learned. I was doing things initially based on what I would have liked, right? Because that's why you start a company. Even if you started because you want to make a t-shirt, You know, we have these young entrepreneurs on the phone or listening. Um, You might start with that one thing that you really like because it's something that somebody said, oh, that's cool. You should do that. But then when you are actually growing your business, you want to find out what what your customer like. So you want to read the audience, know your customer base, be able to fill out for for what's getting the attention and what's not. All of that is communication. That is actually communication because if you can read a room, um, let's just say you did a, um, let's just say at your age right now, you really did want to do a t-shirt company, right? Or you want to sell lashes. Let's just say you got, you ask a hundred people to show up at the park, okay? First of all, cliff note, a hundred people not showing up to the park, okay? But let's say you did in perfect world, they showed up. When you give them a survey, you want to give them a survey kind of open-ended or with as many options as possible. That way you can read the room. While they're taking the survey, you're looking at them to see if they're raising an eyebrow like, oh, that wasn't a good question or, oh, I actually have more to say. Or you want to see if people are mingling and talking about the product when they're at this part. Uh, these type of things are inclusive in communication. These type of things are um, a part of how you build your business, okay? That translates into how you are in corporate America. It translates to how you are in your relationships, being able to tap into another person, okay? That's important. Those are the places where I feel like we did you a disservice because we didn't put you in a position to make those decisions, okay? Because even if one of my nieces and nephews came to me right now, uh, well, let's say the old me right now, and said, TT, I want to do this. I would, okay, you want to do that? Okay, what's your idea? No problem. I will go out, find people, start telling them about it, getting sales, doing this, doing that. Kind of like, oh, good one. Kind of like these fundraisers. Them fundraisers, them kids don't go door to door. Them kids don't pick up a phone because I have never gotten a call. They don't pick up a phone and say, uh, 
TT, I'm having a fundraiser. Would you support me? And would you do this? And here's what I think you would like. And go down the list of the family members and try to get the family members to buy stuff or teammates, moms or whoever, right? That's what we did, though. That's what we did. We had to sell what we were selling to get them to support us. And it was disrespectful if you didn't do it yourself. It was disrespectful if you didn't pick up the phone and call. They was like, oh, if you can't, I've heard this plenty. If you can't call, you can't get my money. Because they felt like you owed them that courtesy, that respect, that whatever. Now, honey, you might walk by somebody's, you know, cubicle at work and the thing just slapped on the wall. That's what we doing. Why is it on your cubicle? Why you don't bring your, your kid to work? Uh on bring your kid to work day or why don't you ask your boss if your kid or tell yeah you ask your boss why don't you ask your boss if your kid can come up there for an hour or two why don't you have use technology why don't you have your kid do a short video that you can send out make them do a part of something and include what the real world is doing today so would they really pick up the phone no they probably wouldn't probably like their grandma or something like that but if you like my mama they know how to get to this stuff child because my mama sure could tell me everything i did listen i don't even post till i want her to know i'm woke but i digress mom if you could hear this i'm that wasn't true i just be like i'll be ready for you girl um but those are the places that i feel like we messed up we did not make these kids do nothing it was your only job is to go to school and come home and have good grades. And now a lot of us, you know, we didn't, we grew our edges back now, but it was tough, you know, at some points and they don't understand anything. So now when we talking about, you know, regular things, they looking at us like, what are you talking about? Like, all I have to do is just keep going to school, right? And you're like, no, it's time for you to get a job now. You know, you you got to take over this part. Now, you don't have to pay no rent, nothing like that. But now you should be able to buy your own little personal stuff and pay your own cell phone bill. And they looking like, you so crazy. I'll be right back. I'm going to the beach with my friends. You know, this is what we do every year. And we're looking at them like, did that disrespectful little person just, what just happened? And they looking at you like, what just happened? Who? They so crazy. They know I'm not finna do that. They know I'm not finna work in fast food. Oh, you want me to get a job for the summer? You want me to get a job in fast food just so I could quit it at the end of the summer? Well, what's the purpose? My, that's a little bit of money. The money I'm making is less than the shoes I'm wearing to get there. It's the principle, kids. It's really the principle. It's about you taking the initiative and gaining the experience of being in the hustle and the bustle. That's why it's important for you to have a job in college. And if you're not heavy in sports, you can go on and have one in high school. Think with your entrepreneur brain too, so you're not clocking in for somebody else. That'll work. But all of this where I thought that so much would have been different right now, especially during this time, you know, when things were not open, I was sitting here thinking of so many things I would have been doing for my family. Child, everybody would have had a pedicure and baby, I would have cleaned up because these shops have doubled their prices, but I would have cleaned up. I would have been doing pedicures. I would have been doing braids. I would have been doing wash and blow dries. I would have been doing car wash because that's contactless, you know, washing their car in the front, you know, of their house and whatnot or you know, bring it over to your house, whoever don't pay a water bill, hint, hint. Um, I would have been doing all kind of things, going to the, the grocery store for my own family member, you know? Well, I did that a couple of times, not for money, but those are things that I thought about um, that the younger people could have really been cleaning up on within their own families because those are things that we could not do. And starting at... I would say to age 13, I was already braiding hair. I had started, you know, dabbling with hair at, uh, what, 10, 11? 
because that's something that I wanted to do. I saw somebody doing it and I'm like, if you're doing that from home, that must mean I could do it from home. So I could be making, you know, a little extra money on the side or most importantly, I could keep doing my hair and like get it done whenever I want. And that money my mom paying to get my hair done, she could give it to me for something else or we could use it for something else. But these kids just don't have that strategy and structure and those type of things. It's not something that we put in them. And it's definitely not something that they would even think about because that need space isn't there. That that uh, that drive is not there. It's just not because they're in a different place. And that's something that we didn't really actually understand because we, a lot of us, were not in that position. So we don't relate with that position. We just thought, well, I know I did. I just thought that that's how it, you was born like that. You was born wanting to do certain things. And I still do. I really do still believe that. And I believe that these kids still have it, but in their head, it's not time for them to use it. Like, I'll use it. I don't need to use it in high school. My mama got me, you know, I don't need to be thinking about nothing else but school. And I come home, I don't clean up. I don't have no chores. I don't do nothing. My mama said, go to school and come home. And I barely keep my room clean. How you doing? Mm, okay. That's not exactly the way to think. Um, the house chore thing. I think that that was another thing that we took away that was helping our kids form and understand responsibility and the importance of doing things with pride and doing it all the way. And it teaches time, respect for time and time management, right? Because you had to have it done before your parents came home. And if your parent was home when you got out of school, you walked in, you dropped your bag, you changed your clothes, washed your hands, you went and did your homework. After your homework, you did your chore and then you went outside. It was structured. It wasn't even a question. It wasn't even a question. So all of these opportunities and places to talk back, they didn't exist. So when we was talking back, it was like, I'm act, I'm tired. And we was tired for a reason. Like, I'm tired. I just came from sports. I walked home. I just came from chilling to practice. I walked home and now I'm walking in and I already did my homework, but now I have to do chores or now I got to watch my sister. Like, actually, I wanted to take a nap. I am so tired. And that's where, you know, you, oh, Lord, that's where I got put on punishment a lot. OK, I was just sleepy, but I digress. That is not something that is what you guys have to deal with. And so you, too as a child can look for opportunities. If you know what you want to be already, start talking to your parents and see if they know somebody that is in the field that you want to be in so that you can talk to them and see the type of things that you need to be doing ahead of time. Get involved in a program like Divine Purpose where you are matched up with a mentor and we make sure that you have as much resources as possible to get what you need and to have a clearer, uh, a much clearer guided path into what you want to do. So again, yes, I feel like we messed up, but yes, my program still is very white glove, is very much so hand holding, but there is very much so accountability, baby. Because if you ask me something, you better have done the research first and at least try. And then I will move forward and help you. But to be resourceful, is a skill set that is out of this world, baby. Let me tell you. Because, and I'll end with this, because you will be put in positions and sometimes get a promotion out there in the real world. And you know 90% of what they ask you, right? But they, excuse me, they putting you in the job and sometimes you have to hit the ground running. They expecting you to do the whole 100%. Or that 10% thing might be the thing that they really need at that time. Guess what you need to know? Because can't nobody stop and, and teach you. Once you get in certain roles, you don't necessarily get trained to do them. You know, you don't get trained to be a project manager, which is what I am now. You don't get trained to be HR. You just do it. 
right? Because you have to be resourceful. Your books still do come into place. Um, knowing which websites to go and look for information, being able to go on to YouTube University and looking for information. All of that is a part of being what they consider management or at a, um, a non-entry level position is that you're resourceful and you can find things on your own to progressively move forward with your work. That shows them that you are not relying on someone else. Now, some cases you do need to, but you're not relying on someone else. You're using your resources and you're making it happen. That is very important. So start doing it now. Start with as many things as you can now. I will include them in the description box. What I think some of the things that you should start uh, trying to implement, even if it's just mock looking for things or, or whatever, I will put it in the description box below some of the things that I think. Um, in closing, I also want to let everybody know that the Divine Purpose program is open. We are going to keep it open for um, the rest of October, I believe. I'm just going to leave it open for the rest of October. Um, and the program will start as applicants come in. I won't hold anybody back, but I won't redo anything either. Uh, the Adult Prom is also going to be in September 2022. So that is it. Y'all see me saying goodbye? I ain't ready. Um, and that is it for this year. So welcome back.